Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and in this video today I want to talk about Luminar 4, Sky Replacement and Reflections. So, Sky Replacement in Luminar 4 is probably one of the most talked about features of the new version of Luminar and it's certainly probably their biggest headline feature. But one of the limitations of it is that it can't do reflections. So if you have a scene where there is, say, water in the foreground and you replace the sky, the reflections in the water are still going to have the old sky in it. So luckily there is a way to kind of quickly fix this using Luminar's built-in tools. Um, it's not perfect on it. it how easy this is depends on the scene. But to give you an example as to what to do, I'm just going to use this simple scene here and uh, we'll replace the sky and do a few other things. And uh, so let's just dive right in. So I've just done a few quick tweaks to this in Lightroom before I sent it to Luminar and that was basically straightening the horizon and stuff like that. But I'm not doing any major edits to it. Now this is a fairly kind of meh scene and uh, let's see if we can enhance it a bit. So uh, I'm going to start by just sending this to Luminar. So go right click on it, go edit in and Luminar 4. Okay, so this has now opened our file in Luminar. And what they recommend that you do is you do kind of, before you do your sky replacement is you do some other enhancements first. So in this case, I'm going to do some accent AI and that will just kind of bring up the colors and the contrast a bit and even straight away that's looking much better and we can try a bit of sky enhancer as well um but we're probably not going to use that since we're going to replace the sky anyway so then the other thing i want to do is use a little bit of ai structure so this is kind of their smart clarity basically and that will just kind of brings up the foreground a bit Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to replace the sky. So let me just jump over to the creative panel and at the top here you'll see AI sky replacement. And I'm going to pick one of these and I'm going to go with bright blue sky three. So just, just give this a second. So as you can see, that is already looking a lot better. It's kind of more interesting, but there's obviously a big disconnect now between what's going on up here in the sky and what's going on in the water below. And the other thing, because every time I do one of these demonstration videos, someone seems to have the need to point out that, oh, the lighting doesn't match in the sky. Um, you can fix that really easily by just going to advanced settings and then go flip sky. And now you can see the light is coming from the right direction. So if you look on the chimney over here, we can see the light is on this side and the light up here is kind of more or less the same direction. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we have all this water down here and you can see there's no reflection of the sky in the water. So the whole thing looks a bit weird. And to fix this, um, what we do is we go to our layers tool. So to get the reflections, if you were using uh, a third party sky or your own sky, um, you could actually just load the sky layer in and use that. But because you, there's no way to get at the actual sky images if you're using the built-in ones. All we're going to do is just basically clone this layer um, as a stamped layer. And then we're just going to cut this out because that's going to look weird if reflected. So um, so to do this, I'm just going to go a new, create new stamped layer. So this will basically bake in the adjustments on the main image and create a new layer from that. And then once we've done that, what we're going to do is go to Go over here and we want to go to erase and all we want to do is get rid of the sign and everything above the waterline. So depending on the image, you, you might not have to do something like this at all. So I'm just going to hit erase once I've masked it out. And again, this doesn't really have to be perfect. We can just go into the clone and stamp tool and just kind of clean this up a bit. And then Again, as I said, because you're going to see this in reflection, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, it just has to be kind of, you just want to get rid of anything big that's going to stand out. Okay, so next thing we want to do, go back to our layers panel and this time go to the layer transform. And all we have to do is flip it. And we're just going to stretch it a bit as well. And now we can just lower our opacity right down. And then go add a mask. 
So it's just a simple gradient mask. And I can drag that out. So you will notice that we still have the top gun here, and that's because every time you use one of the tools, it creates a duplicate layer. So we can actually turn this off. So we can turn both of these off, and now you can see that looks much better. In fact, we can delete these extra layers because we don't need them anymore. So I'll just go in here and go delete layer. And then the, the race image layer, we don't need this either. So we can go delete layer. And then we want our top layer back. And then we can just rename this reflection. Rename layer reflection. Okay, so already that's looking a lot better. It's matching everything now. So, But just to tie it all together, we're going to add another adjustment layer on top of this. And we'll go back to our essentials and just add a vignette. Just to kind of tie everything together a bit better and kind of focus the attention in. And we might just maybe go and add some contrast to the overall image as well. Just a little bit. Okay, so if I do a before and after. So there's our where we started. And that's where we ended up. Before and after. So it's not perfect. It's not a perfect solution. Hopefully at some point in the future, a future version of this will be able to detect reflections as well. To be fair, in an image like this, that's a big ask. <laughs> um, but as you can see, this, this technique works pretty well. Um, but obviously it will be heavily dependent on the type of image. Um, but this just shows you uh, one way to go about it. It's still being able to replace the sky with one click is still a huge time saver. Um, if you were to do this manually, you'd have to create masks for everything anyway. So uh, it just, just saves you some of the process. And you can also use this within uh, Photoshop. You could use this as a plug into Photoshop just to replace the sky and then do the reflections in Photoshop itself. But if you don't have Photoshop and you're just coming straight from Luminar, this just goes to show that within Luminar itself, there are the tools to do this. And if the if you were, say, a river or something and you need to do more complex masking, then you can do that. Um, it would probably be easier to do this with if you had a completely separate sky image. Um, and if you downloaded some of the extra skies, they come just as individual files. And in that case, you can just load in... Uh, another image so if I go to layers I just go plus here and go add new image layer so this will allow you to do just the sky um, but if you don't have the sky separately this is just one way to cheat it so just to finish up now I just hit apply and it'll send it back to Lightroom so there you have it that is pretty much it this is just a quick kind of tutorial on how to get reflections in Luminar 4 um, I hope you found this useful if you do please like share and subscribe and don't forget to check out my Patreon page if you want to help support this channel. Check out my blog. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, thanks for all my supporters for supporting me all this time on Patreon and on the channel here. Um, I also have a Facebook group and a Facebook page that you can check out as well. And um, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.